athlete's foot, time to say goodbye to it. Let's talk about treatments and preventions. So, you don't need to be a professional athlete to suffer from athlete's foot. In fact, it's a common fungal infection that affects many young people and adults. Athlete's foot usually appears on the skin in between the toes, but it can appear elsewhere on the feet. Now the symptoms include itchy white patches between the toes, red sore and flaky patches on the feet, and your skin may even crack and bleed. Now I was going to put some pictures up of athlete's foot, but I know that some people get a little funny with feet. So what I've done is I've left a link in the description below with useful pictures of the symptoms of athlete's foot. Now let's move on to treatment followed by prevention tips which I think is really helpful and useful. Now athlete's foot is unlikely to get better on its own, but fear not because you can buy many antifungal creams, sprays or powders for it from your pharmacy. Some of the most common antifungal treatments include terbinafin, meconazole and clotrimazole. Now it's really important that you always read the information leaflet that comes with it and always speak to your pharmacist about them. Now how you apply these topical antifungal treatments can make a big difference on how effective they are. So, before you actually apply it to the area, make sure you clean and dry the area thoroughly before applying it as directed by your pharmacist. Now it's time for my pro tip. So, you've been using antifungal treatment, whether it's a cream, spray, or powder, whichever, and your feet are looking great now. The athlete's foot is completely gone. At this point, don't stop using the antifungal treatment, okay? Use it for an additional two weeks, and this is gonna help prevent the athlete's foot from coming back. And that was my pro tip, I hope you liked it. Now some antifungal creams also contain hydrocortisone. Hydrocortisone is a steroid which is useful when the skin is red, angry and inflamed. But I'd leave this to your pharmacist to advise you on as they'll be able to tell you whether it's useful for your condition or not. Now there are certain situations where you should see a doctor immediately for athlete's foot, such as being diabetic, having a weakened immune system and many more. But what I will do is I'll leave a full list in the description below which I'd advise everyone to read. So that's the end of treatments, now let's move on to how you can prevent getting and spreading athlete's foot to other people. Now fungi love warm, moist environments, so the number one most important thing that you can do is to keep your feet clean and dry. Now let's move on to the rest of the tips. So. There's no point in treating your foot from athlete's foot if you constantly reinfect them by placing them in damp and fungal infected footwear. So change your footwear on a regular basis. So your work shoes, have a few of them, your gym shoes, have a few of them and rotate. Now it's a shame that I'm stuck on a mountain at the moment, otherwise I would have walked you through my shoe rotation. <laughs> But anyway, what I do is I rotate through the shoes throughout the week. I don't wear the same shoes every day. I leave 24 to 48 hours before I wear the shoe again. That way it has enough time to dry. Tip two. Now if you have to wear the same footwear the day after, let's say you're on holiday like how I am now, then dry the footwear out using a hairdryer, but leave it on a cold setting. You can also take the insole out and that'll help it dry quicker. Tip three. Make sure that your footwear isn't too tight, so don't tie the laces too tight because your toes are going to be stuck together, it's going to get warm and it's going to get damp and the fungus is going to grow there. So invest in some wider footwear if that helps or don't tie your laces too tight and let your feet breathe. Tip number four, flip flops. Make sure you wear these wherever your feet may be barefoot. So in the showers, in the gym changing rooms, in a hot tub, in a swimming pool, wherever. It's going to make sure that you don't spread a fungal infection and also that you don't catch a fungal infection. <laughs> I feel like this is quickly becoming a footwear advert, but it's important. Also, make sure you don't share footwear either. Tip 5. Make sure that you dry your feet carefully, especially in between the toes. Also, try and avoid synthetic socks because they make your feet sweat more. So instead, wear cotton socks, silk socks, woolen socks, these will all help them sweat less. Also make sure to change your socks daily with fresh clean ones. Tip six, athlete's foot is very contagious. So to help prevent it from spreading, please follow these tips and also don't share socks, clothes, footwear, towels, anything like that. That's the end of the video. I hope this video helps you. See you next week. Hey guys, thanks for watching this week's video. Make sure to click that like, follow or subscribe button now to stay up to date with new weekly videos. This is a teleportation scene. Whoever watches this can think, what is this guy doing? See Anna, when you work with the pros, it's efficient. Boom, 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 boom. Done. Done. There could be a bear in this uh, bush over here.
Flippity floppity flippity flop. Flop flop flippity flippity flop flop. Flippity flippity flippity. Hello? So, have a few different. Tip number four. 